Well, as Sherlock Holmes never said, the pieces, Dr. Watson, they're coming together. So let's say I got the motors in. I've got three of them temporarily installed just so I can figure out the uh, motor wire lengths. But I'll take out the uh, last motor out of the bag so you can see how these come. These are the Airblade 1404 3850 so-called Superman motors. And if you're curious about the uh, wire length, I think it's about 120 millimeters. See so yeah, the wires are about 120 millimeters, pretty long. And my concern when I first, when I ordered them was I wasn't sure if they'd be long enough to, what I intend for the back ones especially is to run underneath and then snake around the standoff so that they're soldered from the inside instead of sticking out of the outside. But they'll be plenty long enough for that in the front ones, obviously. And I'm gonna use the 3D printed mount for the Axie antenna. As you can see when I put the VTX here, like this. So that'll be a very neat little setup, pretty secure and good placement. So I'm gonna go for that. So the VTX is just, I'm gonna wire everything up. I'm gonna wire the VTX and the CADX board directly to the flight controller. Instead of having the camera wired to the VTX, I'm gonna wire everything to the flight controller. And let's see, so that should be pretty straightforward. It's gonna go like this, something like this. Yeah, here's the completed frame and electronics, and I've actually already flown this, and I'm going to show you those uh, two flights uh, after I go over the uh, completed frame and everything here. So there's the nice Airblade 1404 3850s, and there's the turtle in the front cage. Uh, weighs about 140 grams, a little bit heavy, but it's quite robust, quite strong, especially this way, very good. Even though this is the light version, it's not really that light, but it's also quite strong. If you wanted a really light one, I think that... Um, Tomo Quad's El Camino is about 20 grams lighter than this, um, but flew very nicely. This evening, these are the two batteries I tried today. I did a uh, 454S 75C and then a 650, uh, yeah, 650 uh, 4S. And between the two, I actually I preferred the lighter battery. I think just because it is a slightly heavier frame, I liked how it felt with the smaller battery. And I got about three minutes of flight time and right an extra minute with this, but the motors had to work a little bit harder. So I think I like this one better. So maybe a 500 would be a perfect size. There's a quick look at the electronics in there, at the video stack in the back, and the HGLRC F428 in the front. So yeah, nothing um, unusual in the uh, builds. It's pretty straightforward. I don't think I did do anything too uh, out of the ordinary. There you can see the silver cable for the turtle running underneath, and there's the little XSR on the bottom. And then I added my own little gel sheet for the battery mat, and then also yeah they. Included this big strap, but I thought that was a little bit too big, so I'm just using one of their smaller ones, which I had from my previous uh, build. And there's uh, the cap I have just zip tied to the battery lead. So now I'm going to show you a couple of flights. In the first flight, I had the camera a little bit too far back, and you'll see a little bit of the frame in the first uh, the first flight, and then I moved it uh, forward after that for the next one. But you'll notice if the camera is forward enough to be clear of the frame at this angle, just a tiny bit of it sticking out of the front there, so could be in slight danger if you went head on into something, but. If you went head on into something, you'd be in trouble anyway. Uh, and then in the second flight, you'll notice there's a slight problem with the camera, which I do rectify at the end of the video. Um, so you'll have to stay tuned for that.
Let's see if we can get rid of that spot. And I don't see anything on the surface of the lens, so that must mean it's behind the lens or on top of the sensor. So there's just uh, no way to get rid of that except to take the lens off. Although I think there might be a way to remove the front casing, but that might be a lot more trouble. So let's just try removing the lens and seeing if I can get to the little piece of dust that way. I'll probably take off this top brace, should be, make it easier to get to the lens. Now, let's see. I'm just going to try to loosen the ring. There we go. Actually, this is a, one of the easier lenses to focus and remove because the ring is, is quite grippy and easy to grip. So we're taking it off. Be careful about dust at this point, obviously. Let's see if what we can see inside of there. And you'll probably have to refocus it after taking the lens off, so bear that in mind too. I don't see anything there, so that must mean it's there's a piece of dust on the sensor. So set that aside in a dust-free area. Now, let's take a look at the sensor. I might need some extra light here. The light's on, and there, you can, you can see it right there. Big piece of dust in the upper left, which, uh, that must be it. Oh yeah, because I have the image flipped, that's why it's in the opposite place. So there's the dust, you can see it. Now, how are we going to get rid of that? Well, I got rid of it. I didn't want to stick anything in there, like a Q-tip or something, so I just gently blew some air over the front, and then I looked, and now it seems to be gone. So hopefully it's not inside of there and it'll land on the sensor again sometime soon, but it may. We'll see, but for now, it should be clear.